Hey what's going on everyone this is Ari Views back with another video and today I will show you guys 10 of the most common mistakes that iPhone users do on a daily basis. These are very important to know. Make sure you take a close look at them and learn these mistakes and not do them on your device. Take a close look. You probably do a lot of those on your device as well on a daily basis. Now another mistake you can do right now is not leave a like on this video. Leaving a like helps out a lot and of course will make this video and this channel do much much better. Alright, the first one, probably one of the most important ones, is not having access to your trusted number on your iCloud account. Now you probably have changed your number sometime, some point in your life, of course you change your phone number, you maybe move to another company or stuff like that, you need to change the trusted number. That is the number that is used to verify your identity when you sign in or help recover your account. And of course you have a lot of your stuff on your account, on your iCloud account, so you will need to have access to that account and that's through the trusted number. Now you can find the trusted number by going to your settings, go to your Apple ID, passwords and security and here will be your trusted phone number. Now if you want to change your trusted phone number, all you gotta do is just tap on the edit button and you can remove the old one and add a new trusted number or you can have of course multiple trusted numbers simply by adding another one right here but this will actually be very very important always make sure that you have access to that number because that's the way you can recover or just sign in into your iCloud account the next mistake a lot of people do is try to install an antivirus on their iPhone. Your iPhone doesn't need an antivirus and there is no such thing as an antivirus for your iPhone. Now you might find those kind of apps, of course not on the App Store, you will find like on third party app stores, but those won't do actually anything for your device. iOS and the, the way the iPhone is built, of course iOS and the hardware work together and they basically act like a, an, an antivirus themselves so your iPhone doesn't need an antivirus app. If you install one from anywhere just know that it won't do actually anything on your iPhone. It's not helping with anything. Now basically what you get on your iPhone is stuff like maybe the and the virus you can call it a virus or whatever you want to call it on the calendar that's like one that you get like a ton of events right here but that's easily removable all you have to do is just go to your calendars right here and of course just make sure you go ahead and delete it from here that's easily removable and it's not any danger to your device and basically you can get like phishing and stuff like that but you won't get a virus on your iPhone there might be bugs and of course there might be like maybe dangerous bugs like the ones that freeze your iPhone or stuff like that but there is no need for an antivirus app. If you see an antivirus for your iPhone just make sure you ignore it, it won't work and it won't do anything on your iPhone. Nowadays a lot of the apps and services that you get on your iPhone are based on subscriptions. So you will have all kinds of different subscriptions of course you have like weekly plans, monthly plans, yearly plans, six months plans and all that kind of stuff. But of course most of these will also offer you a free trial. So you maybe get like three days or a week or a month for free and you subscribe to that service or that app and then you get of course you will get after let's say a week free then it will start actually taking your money because you're subscribed to that and of course it will start just like the paid subscription so what you need to do is head on to your settings and go to your apple id and go to your subscriptions and right here you will see all of your subscriptions so if you have like apps there that you have just subscribed for the free trial make sure you go ahead and cancel those because they will take your money once your free trial expires you will have to pay for that service so if you don't want to do that make sure you always go ahead and check out your subscriptions of course one of the most important parts of your iPhone is your battery. A lot of people will let their iPhone just like discharge the battery completely. That's really really wrong. You should never do that. Always make sure that you start charging your iPhone when it drops down to at least like 30 maybe 25%. Don't let it drop down more. And if you're just trying 
to like store your iPhone or something like that. You just let it die down on the battery and you just leave it for a few days. Make sure you never do that. Make sure you always have your iPhone charged at least at 50 to 60% when you're just storing it away and you don't need it for a few days. Because if you let the battery just discharge completely, it might be dangerous to the battery and that might even destroy the battery completely and your iPhone might never be able to boot on again. Next up is cellular data. This is another very important part of the iPhone that most people will use daily. And the mistake a lot of people make is use the cellular data all the time. So people nowadays have, of course, a lot of them have unlimited plans, so they won't actually turn it off never. So just use cellular data all the time, whether you have Wi-Fi access or not, always use cellular data. In some cases, of course, cellular data might even be faster than the Wi-Fi network you have close in, but cellular data will drain the battery a lot. Now, depending on how far the cell tower is, your iPhone will need way more power to actually have access to the cellular data. That, of course, will lead to the battery being drained a lot. So what you need to do is, of course, make sure that you be very, very careful when you're using cellular data. When you're on a place, whether it's free Wi-Fi or at your home, make sure to turn it off all the time. And of course, always leave Wi-Fi assist on. So when your device is on Wi-Fi and of course the signal is very low, which is of course bad because it also will consume a lot of data, then it will jump to your, basically to your LTE or 5G, whatever you have automatically. And that way it will actually just like save the battery of your iPhone. But when you don't need your cellular data, maybe at night time or if you're on a places where there's like low coverage, make sure to turn it off all the way. So simply go to your control center and just switch off cellular data. The same goes with location services. Now the way I use my device, I turn on location services only when I really need it. Never turn it on when I don't need it. I have it off all the time. I need it for the maps or for anything else. I just go ahead and turn it on. You can of course do that with Siri as well and that's much easier. So make sure you're always turning off the, the location services when you don't use it and don't need it. Or if you don't want to do that, then make sure you go ahead and check the list of the apps that are using your location. Turn off as many of them as possible. Of course, apps that you don't need to have your location, just go ahead and choose never right there and they will never be able to actually access your location. That way, you will save a lot of battery on your device. Now, of course, the same goes for the Wi-Fi and for the Bluetooth as well. They're always working in the background, especially the Bluetooth, always searching for devices and stuff like that. So if you very rarely or you don't need Bluetooth that much, make sure you go ahead and completely turn it off. Not disable it from the control center, turn it off from the settings app because from the control center, it will be disabled, but it won't be off. It will turn on again. So make sure you go to the settings app and completely turn it off. And the app switcher. The famous app switcher of iOS it doesn't have a button to clear all apps. And you want to know why? Because clearing all apps won't help. That's a huge mistake that basically a lot of people do on their iPhone. So you think that when you close one app, it will basically save battery, but that's not the way it works. If I have to load that app again, it will have to load from the beginning. But if I just leave it on the app switcher, whenever I go back to that app, the app is ready for you. So it will be actually like suspended in the background, but it's still ready to be used. That way your iPhone doesn't have to load the, the app again from the beginning. That's the way it works. And this has been confirmed by Apple. So there is a reason you don't have an option to close all apps. That's because it's better to keep them open on the app switcher. Another mistake a lot of people do is giving access to your apps for everything like camera, photos, everything on your device. And you might install a lot of apps. You have maybe like new apps and you don't even take a look at the pop-ups. You just confirm and then they have access to basically everything on your device. Now you can check that out by going to your settings, go under privacy, and you will have here things like microphone, here are all the apps that have access to my microphone. Of course, I can go ahead and turn them off from there. We have same for the camera right here. You will have your photos as well, your Bluetooth, your local network. That's really, really important. So you can go ahead and turn these off directly from here. Now there are apps, of course, like here I have Universal. This is like a remote control app that requires to have access to the local network. So 
that app won't work without that but there are a lot of other apps that basically don't need to use these services so make sure you go ahead and turn them off and last but not least is having a ton of apps on your device now me myself i do a lot of app reviews and i install a lot of apps i try to delete as more as possible from them because most of them i won't actually use on daily basis and if i need any of those i will go back to the app store and of course install it now the reason to delete apps is that of course all of them will have notifications will have like pop-ups they have background app refresh and you have to configure all of those separately so for most most of the time it's better to delete the app completely if you don't really need it now when you go right here on your ios 14 or 15 device there's of course now the option to actually remove the apps from the home screen so let's just try instagram here so that actually a lot of people will mistake this that actually won't delete the app or if you go to the pages right here and you disable a page that actually won't remove the apps from your device that will just hide the apps from the home screen if you want to completely delete an app you will have to tap the delete button and if you don't see the app right here on the home screen then you will actually need to go to the app library and from here just 3d touch on any app and make sure you delete them from here this will make sure that the app is completely deleted from your device and for the apps that you don't delete of course always make sure that you have the notifications configured the right way giving access basically allowing apps to send you notifications will drain the battery out of your device will of course consume a lot of data and cpu power as well so always make sure you turn off the notifications for apps that you don't need to send you notifications so that's basically it for this video guys these are some of the most common mistakes that most people do on their iphone learn from this video and hopefully you don't do these mistakes on your device thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe for more and leave a like and i'll see you on the next one